The Jets are the talk of the football world, so we had to bring in Zach Rosenblatt, who covers Gang Green for The Athletic. Zach, Joe Douglas just finished up his presser, talked to the media. But before we kind of get into that, RG3 tweeted yesterday that the Jets absolutely got fleeced with, uh, with this trade. You listen to what Joe Douglas had to say. Do you feel like he's satisfied with what they had to give up to get Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think they are. You know, they, they had that extra second-round pick from the Elijah Moore trade. They traded that. I think that was the expectation. They moved back a couple picks. I think they were okay doing that. And, you know, the big thing, obviously, was they gave up that conditional second-round pick that can become a first if Aaron Rodgers plays 65% of the snaps, which I think he will. And I think the Jets don't do this trade unless they at least have a belief that Rodgers uh, might play next year. And I think they really do think that. Whether he will, you know, he's he's been fickle in his decision-making in the past, obviously, and you never know what he's going to uh, do but I, I I think they made this trade with the idea that he'd be here for more than one year, and uh, and that's why I don't think it's as much of a fleecing as maybe some do. Somewhere Garrett Wilson is currently doing the Dougie right now because the Jets receivers are happy that they got themselves a QB one. Uh, I looked on Twitter today. Uh, Ian Rappaport tweeted that they've picked up his fifty eight point three million dollar option bonus. That's not necessarily going to cripple them though, money wise, to sign other players. What did Joe Douglas have to say about a possible restructure and uh, what Aaron's cap hit could be? Yeah, you know, Joe, Joe was asked about the possibility of it becoming a more team-friendly deal, and, and he kind of smiled and said that'll come out when it comes out. And I, I get the impression that there will be some restructuring that makes it a little look a little better. But even, even at its current state, the cap hit would only be $15 million in uh, 2023. Jets need to clear some cap space to fit that in, but that, that's pretty good for – a quarterback of Rodgers' caliber. So I think ultimately the money is going to be lower than I think fans maybe are expecting. All right. The juice is definitely worth, worth the squeeze here. So now that the Aaron Rodgers saga is somewhat done, obviously, uh, the draft is a couple of days away. But what's next in the in the couple orders of business for this team? Yeah, you know, I mean, first first and foremost, uh, they have their their the 15th overall pick on uh, Thursday, and I think they need to address the offensive line. You know, they they brought back a lot of the guys from last year, re-signed Connor McGovern, Dwayne Brown's coming back. I think the biggest hole right now is that right tackle, and I think that's where they can address in the draft. You get a guy, whether it's a Broderick Jones from Georgia, Paris Johnson, Ohio State, you know, even Darnell Wright from Tennessee, one of these guys that they can plug right into right tackle or at least compete with Mekhi Becton to start, and, and then you feel good about that. Maybe you get another weapon for Aaron Rodgers in the middle rounds, and you fill out some of the holes on defense, the defensive line, linebacker, safety kind of thing. And then you feel pretty good coming out of this draft in this offseason with, with an improved roster from a team that should have made the playoffs last year, if not for the collapse at the end. Well, they're on the clock for that 15th pick. The NFL draft starts on Thursday night. Zach, thanks for joining us. Thanks.